All right, today's question. Speaking of colleges, this kind of goes back to college and projecting future stars. We'll start with you, Tyvis, and we'll start with your good one first. We'll go around the horn, then we'll go back. Well, let's explain. Are we explaining it? I'm going to explain it, yes. All right. I'm just telling Tyvis to go first. Who was the last player, and LeBron James and Miles Garrett are ineligible for this discussion? <laughs> And the chat, if you're listening, please drop some submissions for your own answers in the chat. We'll read these at yeah. the end. Who was the last player you were 100% certain <coughs> would be a star, Tyvis, before they ever stepped on, their, on the field or the court, whatever their appropriate playing turf is, for their professional debut? Who were you 100% confident would be a star who turned out to be good? Well, I, for this exercise, I, ref, I took away my – my bias is because it was obviously Denzel Ward, but I'm not going to say him because <laughs> I don't want to hear the chat go crazy and all of this jazz. So for this, I went with Martin Emerson. I remember when they drafted Martin Emerson, they were like, people was like, why did they do that and those type of things. But the one thing that I saw about him is that he had led the SEC in PBUs. And me being a former DB, I, that told me that he knew how to play the football well. And when you get into the NFL, one of the things that bothers a lot of young DBs is when that ball go up, they get nervous. I mean, it's, it's the funniest thing in the world. They get nervous. They start grabbing, pulling, don't know how to react. But for a guy that led the SEC and PBUs, I mean, I knew he knew how to play the ball. So when the ball went up and they went at him, I knew he could either get a PBU or he can get a pick. So far, he's turned out to be 100% exactly what I thought. Um, he had that dog mentality that I knew that you needed to succeed in the NFL, and he's made plays on the ball, PBUs and picks. So it's not shocking to me to see him where he's at. Jason, you're up next. Well, that was a good one. Oh, we're doing all the, the ones that all hit the and then all we're the We're going to do all the after. hits and then we'll do the misses. <coughs> okay. So, Jason, you're up next. Who were you 100% would be a star before they were stepped in the field and were right? C.C. Sabathia. Uh, Indians took him in the first round, and I was I went down. I forget where he was pitching. He was in the minors somewhere. The Mahoney Valley Scrappers. No, that's not where. <laughs> was it 98 or was it 99? It was after that. Oh. I think it was like Akron. Okay. I think he was in Akron. Yeah. When I went, I went down and did a story on him when I was a snot-nosed slapdick reporter just trying to figure out my way, which I still am, I guess. Yeah, it was interesting. And I heard a story. I vividly remember this. When he was first drafted, I forget who was telling me this. He didn't know how to grip a fastball. He just held the ball in his hand. Like they told him, like they wanted to see his grip, and he just picked up the ball and threw it. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> but the size, I looked at this dude, I'm like, this guy is massive. This guy's going to be phenomenal. And, I mean, I had no scouting chops or anything. I just looked at the size and looked at the first-round pick and thought, well, he's got to be good. And I remember how hard he threw. And, <laughs> and I always was really excited to see him. And he had a great rookie year, played on a terrific Indians team. They called him up. Um, and, and I think he won like 17 games as a rookie, 15, 17 games. He played on a team with a lot of talent around him. And he's a Hall of Famer in my book. I think he'll be in the Hall of Fame. And, and I just – that was the one guy. There I, aren't many. That was the one guy. By the way, um, the reason I said Mahoney Valley is because um, when I was – start my first professional radio job mm – -hmm was in 1999 as the play-by-play -play voice of the Batavia Muckdogs. I've mentioned this before. Sabathia was drafted in 98. He played in rookie ball in 98. In 99, he was whatever, young. I mean, yeah. he, got, he was like 19 drafted years old. Drafted him out of high school, so yeah. yeah. And in 99, so our team made the playoffs. And in the play, four teams made the playoffs in the Penn League. And in the first round of the playoffs, we had a best-of-three series against the Mahoney Valley Scrappers, which was the Indians team. And Sabathia had been in the in – the, so in those days, it was rookie ball and then short season A and then so on and so forth. Rookie ball and, and short season A are kind of done now. But, but they called Sabathia up the last, like, two weeks of the season to pitch for Mahoning Valley. Mm -hmm. And so we hadn't seen him because we played them a lot during the season, but we yeah. hadn't seen him all year. And I remember going to Mahoning Valley and for the playoffs, and he, I saw him get on the mound – and I had no idea who he was yeah. at the time because I only knew the guys on our team. Yep. And we had some major league players. In 99, we had Marlon Byrd, oh, who yeah. was a long-time yep. major leaguer. Yep. And I saw Sabathia get on the mound. And Mahoney Valley just started as a minor league team around that time. Mm -hmm. So the place would be, was sold out. It was like 5,000 fans, which for a low A-ball team That's is pretty good. And it was packed. And Sabathia went on the mound. And I saw him in that first inning. I was like, oh, my God. Right? Because there were guys, you know, most of the pitchers at A-ball didn't look like that. Right. And that was – so I love that one because he was 
phenomenal. Yeah. I think he had, I think he pitched like 15 innings for them and had 30 strikeouts. Yeah. Something ridiculous. Yeah. I, I remember watching, I think it was in Akron, head of yeah. Akron. I went and right. watched him when he was at Akron. Just a massive human being on the mound. Oh, my God. Did that was you, probably 2,000. He wasn't in the minus say long. it took him to – he got to the pros to learn how to properly throw a fastball? When they drafted him, he, yeah. They said, like, they were looking <laughs> – So he threw fastballs. He just picked it up. Like, <laughs> just a five monster. fingers. Just five fingers and go. I agree he's all a famer. I think That's that, ridiculous. I, I, know. That, I, I know. By the way, I think that late career renaissance at the end – remember with the Yankees, he was going down the tubes. Yeah. And then he had two years at the end where he bounced back and pitched really well. Yeah. That put him <laughs> over the top. top. I, I think, think it I think he should be in the – Hall of Fame. I hope he is. Yeah, I hope so too. What a great guy. We had a chance. Phenomenal. To, I know you know him, but we had a chance to meet him. I don't know if you were in the studio the time he came here. No, but he was awesome. Yeah. Were you here, Tyvis, that day? No, I wasn't here. That awesome, day. awesome, awesome. He awesome was interview. couldn't have been nicer. Yeah, that's I mean, what, such a good dude. Er, Earl was telling me the story about it. He had, yeah, it was so fun to meet him. So, yeah. that Tremendous was, that was really ambassador for the game. I, I wish that I, it feels like the Indian Guardians, Indians, Cleveland organization could do more with him. He, he was here. I know. He was originally here. Like, yeah. I know if you ask anyone about Sabathia, they're going to cite him with the Yankees. Like, they'll, pair him, they'll th- remember him as a Yankee. He'll probably go into the hall as a Yankee. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but he's Cleveland. Yeah, no doubt. And then remember those couple of months from Milwaukee? <laughs> He just, yeah. That was incredible. He what pitched he did like about. every other day. That was insane. <laughs> Not to go get All right, Mike, my, my guy is also, was also a Cleveland Indian slash guardian, and that's Francisco Lindor. Mm. I remember meeting Francisco Lindor. I was in, I was in spring training. What was Lindor's rookie season? I don't remember off the top of my head. Was it 2012? Lindor's rookie season was. What was his rookie season? Because I met him before that. When wasn't it the playoff his, year? His first 12. season was 2015. Yeah. Oh, Sheesh. oh, I was thinking the other playoff year, 2012. Yeah. Yeah, 2015. Wow, it was that long. Okay, so it must have been 20. It was either so in 2013. We, I, I was in spring training covering the Guardians for the radio station. I can't remember what year it was, but it was before Lindor went to the majors. So it was probably 2014. Spring training 2014 was probably the first year he got to be in camp with the big league mm-hmm. team. And he was, I think he was 19, 20, whatever he was. He was a little skinny kid. And he came into the, at, at, and you know this, Jason, you got that little closet where people do interviews oh, yeah. at, the, at the Guardians facility. And I remember... He came in there to sit, and he sat down with Dustin and I, and I was like, we knew he was a good prospect. But when I had a chance to talk to him, I was like, wow, this guy's like 20 years old, and he is special. Yep. Like, he talks like he's been a major leaguer for six years. He was special. He was electric. I'm still sad. I know that the Guardians had to do what they had to do. Uh, I'm still sad they traded Lindor. And Lindor had a bad year his first year at the Mets, and he's not – as great a player as we thought he, as I thought he'd be there, but he's still really good. I, and I'd still love to have him on this team. I mean, I'd love to have him on this team, but it's they nailed that. It's incredible. Like they got Jimenez for it. Jimenez yeah. signed the extension. Hey, it was a good Lindor trade. Wouldn't. It worked it was out. A good trade for both. But in sides. a perfect world, I'd still love to have Lindor on the team. Sure. I, it would be nice if you had him somehow had Jimenez at second, Lindor at short, oh, and Jose God. at third. That'd be beautiful. You know, and what was special about Frankie is he loved Cleveland when he was here. I don't think that was an act, Jason. Do you? You think it was an act? I don't think it was an. I. Everybody says the right thing. Okay, but he. But, but, but he special. backed it up. He yeah. went to other sports. Yeah. He, he was. He was the ambassador for the All Star Game. When you're drafted by an organization, yeah. you come up, and it's the only thing you know. Yes, of course. He was a it's great example. Special. He he was a good example for other athletes to follow. Yeah. Even no. if it was, even if there was some phony, it, it like, hey, I just got to do this. But you didn't. You, you couldn't tell. Because he embraced it. Yeah, he did. Like Joe Hayden did. Joe Hayden did, too. Joe Hayden, Joe Hayden was awesome with that. Yeah. And then it was a disgrace. You know who Browns else did? Cover. Baker Mayfield. He did. You're right. He did. That's fair. Uh, but in the end, so I'll go with Lindor. Yes. Now, we're going to start with you and go on the reverse because I want to make sure we get some of these fan submissions in. We've got a bunch of these. Yeah. Well, who are you 100% certain would be a star who did not turn this out This was a, a hard one for me. Like, I thought Brandon Whedon. I didn't think Brandon <laughs> Whedon was going to be a star, but I thought he was going to be good. Mm-hmm. There's some other guys I thought would be good that weren't. And I was thinking about who I was star. It took me a while to think of it, and then I got it. And this guy actually was a star briefly, very briefly, for like a year or two. Danny Salazar. Oh, yeah. When Danny, with all the pitchers, and the Guardians have had, in just the, the 13 years I've been covering the Guardians, they've had... More good pitchers, more all-star caliber pitchers than any other team should have. 
But when I first saw this guy come to the big leagues, I thought he was going to be the best of the bunch. He was electric. Electric. His strikeout. Like, look at his strikeouts. 688 strikeouts in 591 innings. Yeah. Do you know how good that is? Yeah. That is crazy to have almost 100 more strikeouts than innings. That's insane. And then the first time the, the Indians went to the playoffs after I moved here was 2012. That's why I was thinking of the playoffs. And he pitched in a wild card game against the Rays. Yeah. I and he that. pitched well. Yep. They lost because they didn't score. But he pitched a hell of a game. He had electric stuff. You found out down the line he wasn't maybe the toughest guy behind the scenes. Who yeah. knows what the truth is? No, that's the and truth. And he just couldn't. And the injuries killed his career. And he's out of baseball, I think. Oh, yeah, he is. And maybe he's playing in some you know, to other back. foreign league. He, he came come. back with the Yankees and played in the minor leagues for them like yeah. two years ago. But the guy, but he was an all-star, I think, once. And he had a couple of years with really good numbers. But the, I, I, thought, he, I thought he was going to be an absolute stud for years. Yeah, he flamed out. And if he flamed out, yeah. Well, Jason, you're up next. I... I'm going to do one real quick that I didn't give Mike that I thought about this morning. That's probably a better answer. And then I'll give him I'll give the real <laughs> answer. Courtney Brown, I thought was going to be a mm. beast. When uh, the Browns took a lot of defense. I, I had the 99 jersey. Yeah, I thought Courtney Brown was going to be a monster. But I didn't think about that until this morning on the drive-in. So I the one forgot, I gave Mike. I forgot all about him. Dewan Wagner. When the Cavs took oh, the Oh, that was such a good God. one, too. Dewan Wagner, sixth overall, scored 100 points in a high school game. Yes, he did. Uh, I thought him and LeBron were going to be terrific running mates together. And unfortunately, I think he would have been, but uh, he had ulcerative colitis that was not diagnosed until later on. And just it was health more than anything, I think, with oh, him. Oh, really? It just, it just derailed his entire career. But just electric player, could score at will. Uh, back in the time before scoring has oh become God. what it is today. Look how young LeBron looks Yeah, I know, there. right? That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Who could they have taken at six if they hadn't taken it? Somebody that turned out to be a great player? Uh, what draft was that, 2005? No, it was uh, the 2002 draft. I think it was 2002. They took him sixth overall. It was the year before uh, they they got LeBron. After Yeah, uh, this is – I mean, Amari Stoudemire went two picks later. LeBron <coughs> <coughs> Butler was four picks later. Uh, Mark Stout Meyer was a hell of a player for him. Ooh, Nay Nay was in that draft. Yeah. Karam and, and I don't think it was a bad pick. Yeah, it was, just, just, it was health. Yeah, yeah, health took him down. Tayshaun Prince. But, yeah, Dewan, I loved watching Dewan Wagner play. Dewan mm. Wagner and Courtney Brown, those two. Mm. Mm. Thomas, you, you kind of you, you kind of messed up this this one. I did, so I'm a, I can I can pivot you from tell it. Us, yeah, well, tell us what you picked. You messed up because What I actually – I sent Mike two. I sent Mike two. You if, did, well, use the, use the second one then, because he said OBJ is his first one. Yeah, because he was OBJ was going to be the th- last Thano piece because uh, you said in Cleveland and it didn't. Well, work I out. think we'd all agree. We all thought, OB, OB, oh, at least I did. We, we all thought OBJ was going to be great. Right, he was just a guy. Well, my other one was Johnny Manziel. I actually thought Johnny oh, Manziel wow. would be really good. I never believed in him. I did I for, never for, for, in him. for for when he was coming out. I was like, you know what. No, a guy with Kyle Shanahan that 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 can work out. Like he he'll put him in the right situations. He he's mobile enough. I thought maybe the mobility of him being able to get away from stuff will actually help him succeed. He'll buy his receivers time. Mm-hmm. I thought it would be good. And the man never even watched film. So Remember that first game against the Bengals? How bad he was. I don't know if it was the first whatever yeah. game it was when he took the ball and threw it. Backwards <laughs> over his head. I knew they were screwed. Well, this was this was at the draft. Like when what, they drafted him, I said, "Oh yeah, we And good. I got I got to admit this. What's funny is for months, <laughs> as you guys know, remember that? As you guys know, I, I like, mentioned this yesterday. You take it. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was probably stoned. At the moment. I mean, probably he was hey, like coke hey. or whatever. <laughs> but as you guys know, and I mentioned this on the show yesterday. In those days, we were talking about the Browns draft from November to April. I mean, sure. that was the conversation yeah. every year. Yeah. And for months, everybody, like so many fans wanted the Browns to draft Johnny. Dustin was on board. He wanted, to, and Dustin's usually really good with the draft. Like he's better than, than most people would, would, would figuring it out. Uh, but he wanted Johnny. And I was like, no, 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 no. He sucks. He sucks. He's never going to. And then like two weeks before the draft, <laughs> Everybody they talked to you. They, they talked to you. <laughs> and I jumped on the bandwagon those last two weeks. And then we got drafted. I, like everybody else, got excited. And the guy was a total bum for the moment. He threw the ball. Total bum. You know, you know D. White pulled something like that. 
where he threw the ball. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Last year he, yeah, he did. did. Yeah. Let yep. me read a couple fan submissions. Yeah. I'll get a read. Then we got Sean Merriman in the queue it. ready to hop on. But uh, <laughs> Rated R said Kyrie it. Irving, who was another good one. Tequila Mockingbird said Joe Thomas. Kyrie's phenomenal. No, he's saying no, for the it oh, would. The oh. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, the Joe Oreo Thomas one, I was definitely – but I really wanted Adrian Peterson at that uh, time. I can't lie about that. Loco Oreo <laughs> said Denzel Ward. Max Volick said Tyvis Powell. I'm not sure if that was for they're going to be a star, going to be a bust one time. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, he's talking about a show. star. Uh, Brad Dowerty also in there. B. Skrill said Deshaun Kaiser thought he was going to be great. I was wrong. Ooh, I, I knew he was. I didn't think I he knew. He threw, me, he threw me two picks in my last <laughs> game. I knew he wasn't going to be good. <laughs> Michael Youngman said I was 100% confident in Manny Ramirez. I saw him as a minor leaguer in Canton. Good one. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, LeBron James, Lindor, and Manziel. You can't say LeBron. That was part of the exercise that it was not LeBron. I, I'm just reading the comments. Well, don't read it if they <laughs> break the rules. Uh, someone actually responded, Miles Garrett and LeBron were not eligible. So thank you, Corey Richmond. Thank for, you, Corey. Corey's uh, paying attention. Playing a part of that. Brad Dowdy and Mark Price were in there. Uh, Beecham says Andre Miller, LOL. Uh, David Greenshield said, I knew Nick Chubb was going to be a stud. A uh, couple more. A couple for Wemby. Um, but I, I'm not sure that one necessarily counts. Wimby? This is Cleveland. It's supposed to be Cleveland. A couple more for Brad Dougherty. Dougherty. I'm going to tell you. Dougherty. I'm going to tell you a guy. Brad Dougherty. Keep I'm, calling him Brad Dougherty. I'm going to tell you Dougherty, a guy the Browns drafted that I was like. And last one, and he turned says, out to be uh, good Maurice Corrette knew he was going to be a stud. But he wasn't in the NFL. As much as we love and, Maurice, he wasn't in the NFL. And Jay says Trent Richardson, I knew he was going to be a bum. So. I didn't think that he would be that bad. Yeah. All right, let's get our guest in here. Wait, hold first, on. Oh, oh, Titus, we 